Uh, welcome to this problem solving session of NOC 23 EE82 Introduction to Semiconductor Devices. This course is hosted by NPDEL and this is the week 5 uh, of this course uh, of this problem solving session on 26 August 2023. My name is Amit. I am a PhD student at ISC Bangalore. So just a quick recap of, of the previous things that we were doing. The week 1 we saw the material classification primarily in terms of the conductivity then we saw some basics of quantum mechanics like de Broglie wavelength, Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Then we solved a few problems uh, using Schrodinger uh, time independent uh, equation for infinite quantum wells. That is, if you recall, the quantum wells look something like this. So this is on y axis is your voltage, on x axis is your position, and this is in this is going to infinity. Okay, and then we saw that the particle is trapped, and we we uh, we saw a few uh, energy expressions and whatnot, and uh, we also saw that these quantum wells can be asymmetric. This is this is asymmetric. For instance, it's from zero to L. It can be from minus L to L. That's a symmetric well. Then we saw a unique uh, principle called the quantum tunneling. So let's say this is again related to quantum potentials. So this is a potential, and let's say some particle is coming like this, and this is the energy barrier of height v naught. Classically, we know it cannot cross this barrier because it has to go over it energy is lower but in quantum mechanics it can it can pass through it has because it's a probabilistic regime so it has some finite probability of being here so the probability is not equal to zero which is this phenomenon as known as quantum tunneling finally we came back to semiconductors and we saw how band gap originates using the ronic panem model and uh, how the uh, wave functions overlap and so on and then we saw that uh, this band gap, the uh, okay, I should clarify band gap. So this is conduction band. This is valence band. Electrons can be above conduction band or below valence band, but cannot be here. This is the forbidden gap or band gap. And we saw the dispersion relation, which is the EK relation and the curvature of it gave us the effective mass. And then we came to this doping in a semiconductor that is uh, new uh, and semiconductor which is not doped is called intrinsic. Extrinsic is of two types. If it is n-type dopants, which are which means it can donate electrons, it becomes n-type, or it can accept electrons and it becomes p-type. Uh, here holes are the majority carriers. Then we similar a very close related uh, concept to this donor and acceptors was the Fermi level, which is and Fermi function is basically a probability function. And Fermi level we saw its position in the band gap for a non-degenerate semiconductor that how it depends on the doping and whatnot. Finally, we saw the, some expressions of carrier concentrations uh, related to the equilibrium concent uh, and the in the equilibrium concentration uh, Ni, which is the intrinsic concentration, and NCN, and we were some constants derived from some uh, some quantum mechanical concepts. And then we we were just interested in looking at their expressions. Finally, we saw the dependence on temperature that how we increase or decrease your temperature. How does it change? So we saw that very low temperatures, very few dopants are ionized, which is the partial ionization regime. This regime which is this means we are talking very low temperatures um, maybe minus minus 100 uh, minus 200 degrees celsius that is not even 100 kelvins right extrinsic regime is basically it, it's usually present at the room temperature and intrinsic is when you increase the temperature so much that even the silicon silicon bonds start to break and there's a huge influx of generation of electron hole pairs and the concentration increases drastically uh, week three, we built on the concepts of the semiconductors, and we saw the now the motion of the semiconductors in terms of drift current and the mobility, which mobility is given by mu, and the conductivity is given by sigma. And we saw what happens when you have non-uniform doping, and we saw the bands can be bent like this. We saw how the kinetic energy looks like, and this this gives rise to something called a built-in electric field. And then we saw the other uh, uh, mechanism of uh, transport of charge carriers is the diffusion. That means there's there's a large number of electrons let's say in one region and few so the electrons will naturally go from here to here with, due to this concentration gradient and the total electron current is in this combination of drift and diffusion current and then we saw how the einstein relation links the mobility and the diffusion constant all right i request you to just revise this einstein relation uh, but what happens when the semiconductor is not a thermal equilibrium that is that means we are injecting some electrons connecting to a battery essentially or we are shining some light and which can generate electron hole pairs and mind you these electron holes can also recombine so that so that also introduces certain complexity finally we, we combine all these concepts into what is known as minority carrier diffusion equation 
where we saw that in a steady state how is the total how is the excess how is the flux of excess minority carriers is related to drift diffusion generation recombination we analyzed all this in low level injection low level injection means that the carriers that we are injecting are low as compared to the background back background majority doping so just these are the terms you can go through the lectures are also uploaded on my youtube channel plus you can go through uh, professor uh, lectures which are there in your uh, course i mean npdl website finally in the last week we learned all these basics of semiconductors and we formed we brought a b and n type we formed a p n junction we saw the formation of depletion region we saw various types like abrupt or step junction linear junction uh, pin which stands for p type intrinsic and n type this is p type then you have an intrinsic which means it is not doped and finally we have n type PN plus means it's highly doped in N, P is moderately doped, N is highly doped. Similarly, P plus N is P is highly doped and N is moderately doped. Then we saw that we need, we invoked the depletion approximation to solve the Poisson's equation and we also assumed the quasi-neutral region uh, that very few things are happening, interesting things are happening, very few interesting things are happening in the quasi-neutral region. So we neglected, I mean, for our for our practical purposes. And these are the key terms that, we, that, that we'll again come back to that's why I'm highlighting them as point four. Something called depletion weight, peak electric field, stored charge, and built-in potential. All right. So this is this is all that we had talked about uh, in the pre previous four sessions. Now, uh, just please keep that in mind. That till this time, we are talking about a PN junction, which is at equilibrium. Okay, at thermal equilibrium. We saw that EF was flat. If you recall the last week discussion. So PN and type semiconductor blocks. Let's say we bring them together. And we see that since on the left you have excess holes, right? And on the right you have excess electrons, right? So they will naturally diffuse from one side to another. They will go from here to where holes will go, come from left to the right. And they leave behind a charge. So this will become negatively charged. This will become positively charged. This was what we came to know as the depletion region, right? And we also saw that, so this is, again, this is for an abrupt PN junction. We saw this is how the space charge profile looks like, and then how the electric field. Note, now this is a plus charge on the right. This is the metallurgical junction, the, the, the solid black line that you see in, in the middle of P and N, right? So this electric field that's going to happen here, which is denoted and it peaks at the metallurgical junction itself. This is this profile, and we also saw that if there is a profile, there must be if there is an electric field, an electric field is related to potential, so there must be a profile. And we saw this is how the profile of a of a of this abrupt p injunction looks like. This is the band diagram, and this difference that you see between EC on the both two sides is nothing but your built-in potential. And similar thing can be said on the holes. Same discussion can be so. This is also VBI, E times VBI to be more specific because we are expressing here in terms of electronic energy, hence multiplication by E. VBI is usually expressed in the units of volts. Now, please, this is at equilibrium. Why? Because you see EF is constant here, right? That's that's your biggest hint identifying whether it's at equilibrium or not. It means thermal equilibrium. Okay, so now let's disrupt this. Now we'll discuss what is known as P injunction under forward bias, right? And we are disrupting the equilibrium. Till now, we are talking about P injection at equilibrium, but now it's no more at equilibrium. All right. So let's just try to understand that uh, um, that how is it functioning, right? How do we do that? So you recall we had talked about two ways in the previous classes. First, you apply a battery, which is very straightforward. So there are two ways of doing this. I mean, there are many, but uh, you apply a potential, apply a potential, or external electric field to be more technical second thing you can shine light when you shine light it generates uh, electron hole pairs and all things it's the equilibrium is disrupted so in this case we'll talk we'll take the first approach that is application of electric potential okay so let's apply a battery over here to this all right so i'm applying a voltage source constant voltage source let's say let's keep things simple so this constant voltage source now the next question rise what should be the polarity positive or negative so in this case what i'm talking about first we'll discuss as forward bias in forward bias this voltage source we'll assume to be like this okay that means the p terminal 
is connected to the positive edge of the battery okay this is p and this is the positive edge so essentially uh, you see the current will be so this external battery can supply current in this direction right current starts from positive okay so j just imagine what's going to happen when so electrons are going to come right so uh, or you can say the holes are going to come right so if holes will be traveling like this along this wire what will happen note there are negative space charge which is stored here correct here it's positive so what's going to happen this holes excess holes will come and try it and will recombine with some of this so depletion width is going to reduce correct and consequently we saw in the last class also that depletion width and depletion width will reduce which i have just explained with a very simplistic uh, understanding and subsequently width and potential are linked due to this formula this formula was due to some physics behind but just i'm um, being very simplistic here so if w reduces you can clearly see na and nd are not changing so built-in potential must also reduce what that means is so built-in potential reducing so what should happen is that this line should go up because then only vbi should decrease correct and similarly this line should also go up a bit so these two ec and ev right should move up on the n side i'm assuming on the p side they remain fixed essentially vbi is going to decrease for a forward bias effective vbi i should say so this vbi is due to when this p n junction is at equilibrium now when i inject some carrier such that p is connected to the positive terminal of the battery the effective vbi is going to reduce so let's see what will that what will that impact be it is denoted in this diagram so what will be the impact of a p n junction and a forward bias as you can see that the vbi has now shrunk which we have just talked about so now it's denoted by vbi minus va correct and so you can clearly see that it has shrunk now what will be the impact of it we'll see but in this diagram you can see the electrons can start to flow note here they were under the equilibrium right so whatever drift was whatever diffusion was happening due to the concentration gradient was effectively balanced by this present electric field now artificially you have suppressed this electric field so what's going to happen the diffusion will start to dominate which we see here so electrons will, will start to diffuse and holes will also start to diffuse and and the concept which 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 i like to explain here is this just focus on this efn and efp these are known as quasi fermi levels and note in the first diagram like this efp and efn are the same which we have been denoted by ef right so what's what are quasi fermi levels okay here there is no construct uh, it has no construct to the probability as such here it was a physical understanding behind it right here we are just denoting it for our in, for our convenience let's just say on the n side we just we still want to denote it as a n type semiconductor hence we have denoted as efn on the right side again we are denoting by efp as if it's a p type semiconductor so again these are quasi these so actual fermi level is not constant anymore please note that because we are injecting there's an at external electric field or potential that is being applied to this p injunction but for our understanding for mathematical uh, keys we deno we, we we create these two constructs efn and efp all right and let's see a couple of questions on that so which of the semiconductor samples the law of mass action applies so we saw that this law of mass action is applicable when the semiconductor is under equilibrium so under a it will be applicable you can see it's an n type but it is still be applicable right again here ef is is at the center so so here also it will be applicable right here it will not be applicable because we just saw here we are injecting law of mass action is for at equilibrium so this will not be applicable here similarly it will not be applicable here because ef is you see is not constant all right a closely related cons uh, i mean extension of that is which have excess carrier generation so we saw this is under equilibrium not here not here but it is under this right here the uh, e efn and efp are exactly the same which is denoted by ef so here generation might not be happening but definitely here we are injecting this is very similar to the, to, to the diagram for an uh, for an uh, for a pn junction so here definitely we can say that some excess carrier generation is happening which is denoted by the split fermi levels of electrons corresponding to electrons and holes 
all right so just to summarize uh, the quasi fermi levels are, are a construct just to just to simplify just to for an intuitive understanding of how is how the electron or hole concentration may look on one side or the other all right okay so now let's continue with this the so this is the diagram that we had seen earlier that pn junction under forward bias okay and uh, so just we saw i i told you about that this level might be raised right we due to an application of bias we saw that built in effective built in potential has reduced it's now vbi minus va and thus what what i said earlier is denoted here in this diagram so now there are extra pile up of electrons which you can see here in this blue circles so what can happen is that now they can easily go from here to here because this barrier which was blocking it earlier this high barrier has now reduced right how it has reduced to the application of a potential so which has reduced the internal electric field that was there so so there is much less electric field to oppose this diffusion of electrons all right similarly holes can go from here from this side to this side they can diffuse mind you this is diffusion this clearly a potential uh, sorry concentration gradient right on the n side there is excess electrons on p side there is excess holes all right okay so uh, so we saw this and there are some mathematical expressions that we can write okay on the n side on the right side we can write n equal to ni this is just like the the expression which you saw in the second session right so ef ef minus efn minus efi yeah it was earlier here i'm just noting on right side so this expression mind you is only valid for the n type semiconductor over here similar i can write for p type okay now what happens is that so efn you can just just assume efn to be extending this throughout so you multiply these two so np equal to ni square efn minus efp over kt and efn minus efp by definition is nothing but applied voltage the difference the split that has been caused in fermi levels is due to the application of va right so so that split is so this is exactly equal to efn minus efp is nothing but qva over kt and this expression is very similar to law of mass action hence this is called the law of the junctions not law of mass action law of the junctions okay just keep that in mind and if you keep va equal to 0 this means the semiconductor the pn junction is again at equilibrium you will see np equal to ni square which we expect and which was true throughout the uh, throughout the pn junction so similarly this expression is true throughout this pn junction which is under forward bias okay and uh, and as we saw earlier uh, that uh, no uh, excuse me okay so so this is now i told you that so what we saw was that then now the holes for instance can diffuse from this side to this side right so their concentration must increase this is the baseline concentration of holes on n side denoted by p and zero p means hole concentration n means n side zero means reference p and zero p and x means hole concentration on n side as a function of x so we saw that their excess holes now can diffuse and so this is the excess holes right these are your excess holes on the other hand these are your excess electrons excess electrons so electrons are coming from this side to this side so this is a hole that are coming we're injecting holes from here and these are the electrons that are coming assume we are injecting electrons from here so excess electrons will come to this depletion region from here what will happen we'll simply follow the minority carrier diffusion expression and they'll decay which you see this exponential decay that you're seeing here all right the mathematics of it you can go through the lecture notes we are not here to that i'm just here to just quickly summarize that what this is all about and this is the complete picture if you, if you do not if you if you have any doubt any time what but how pn junction behaves right this is your diagram to rescue when i forget how a p injunction behaves i just try to recall this diagram and most of the things are self explanatory here okay so you see j total must remain constant we are talking about a steady state current so this is a total current now total current can be total current is due to four components you see majority carrier hole current so on p side the, the holes are the majority carriers so here you see this current so approximately almost completely of the current is due to majority carrier hole right and uh, as you come near the depletion region you see the excess electrons have been inducted now they start to decay so here a huge component now is taken up by electron diffusion current 
electrons are diffusing from this side from inside okay secondly what you see here is now in the depletion region you can clearly see the uh, so only the diffusion components are there right so this is the diffusion component that is there it's it's remaining constant right so sorry so diffusion uh, so diffusion is dn over dx right if you recall so that component is is only there right and similarly on the right side you can see again more details you can figure out there but what i'm what i'm trying to say is that on the p side you can see two major components on the n side again you can see two major components so the picture is quite a bit symmetric how it works will gain a bit more working understanding when we solve some problems all right and these are the expressions which uh, which were derived in the lecture so this on the left side you see uh, on this term in square brackets is also known as reverse saturation current js okay just keep this in mind and it keeps handy when we talk about the why reverse saturation because if you put if you apply a reverse voltage that means VA is negative. Remember the definition of VA we had defined was that P was connected to some battery at the P terminal of the P in the junction diode, right? So, so if VA is negative, this term will come out to be negative, exponential of a negative term and KT is only 25 millivolts. So you assume VA to be 1 volts, this will be negative, quite a bit negative number. So J total, this term will exponential of some huge negative number is, uh, is 0, all right? So only minus 1 will survive. And then the J total will be nothing but minus of Js. Hence this term, reverse saturation current. Okay, so I think that's enough of the that's enough of the summary of the of the PN junction diodes. Now let's just just quickly revise what we had talked about till now in terms of questions. So in a forward bias PS junction, in a PN junction, sorry. So current density is primarily drift current due to movement of majority carriers. We just saw in this diagram. So in a PN junction, so what's going to happen is that the current is primarily due to the diffusion of these. Of, of these. You see, the, the current contribution primarily is due to these components. You see, so in, in when it's not biased, there's no current flowing through here, right? And, and what is the cause of this current and this current? This is nothing but the diffusion, right? So some, so some electrons are diffusing from this side to this side, just giving rise to this current. Similarly, some holes are diffusing from P side to N side, it's giving rise to this current, right? So what we can say, current density is primarily diffusion current due to movement of majority carriers, this. So sometimes it becomes confusing whether you're talking about majority carriers or minority carriers. So it depends on in which side you're talking about. For instance, holes are majority in P side. Electrons are majority in P side, while holes are minority in P side. Okay, so hence uh, we, I'm talking about this. So look at this uh, this solid line, and again look at this solid line for electrons. I'm talking about these two. So the current component is due to these fellows. Hence we call due to majority carriers. I'm defining majority from this perspective in this case. Okay. A similar question in the forward bias PN junction, the sequence of events that best describes the mechanism of current flow. So we we, ha we had seen that. So this is a PN junction diode. And we had we are applying it a forward bias VA. So what's going to happen? The holes are going to get injected. So first thing is injection of holes, or let's say in, injection of majority charge carriers. So first step is injection, right? Second step, what's going to happen is that so this is a depletion region here, right? Finally, they will travel here. We say nothing is much is happening over here, but actually there is something which is happening which is the actually they are drifting this very small electric field enough to take these holes from here to here and then here what's happening is diffusion because there's an x there's huge excess of holes right and then what will happen is diffusion and finally when they cross the depletion they'll recombine with the electrons that are here then what's happened will recombination Okay, when they come here, they become minority carriers. So here, injection is of majority because you're talking about, let's say, holes in, in our example. Right, here again, drift of majority. Here again, of majority. But when they come to this side, end side, the holes will become minority charge carriers, okay? So what's the step? Injection. A drift is sometimes skipped. We don't often because this is happening in quasi-neutral region. Okay, we, we, for low level injection, we don't even talk about it most of so. So that's why injection, diffusion, and then recombination. Okay, so which is this option, first option. 
this is by the way a gate 2013 problem so the way the assignments are designed uh, just to give you a flavor that they're very similar to what's asked in the competitive exams okay just look at this last problem related to theory of this so let's give more choose the correct statement or statements so near the depletion region diffusion current is dominant where drift current is negligibly small for a forward bias we uh, that's what i've been saying that so this is if this is the depletion region this is p this is n let's apply a bias right so the depletion region we saw only diffusion is dominant okay so this option is correct majority carrier diffusion current is dominant in the quasi neutral regions this is not true it's actually drift which is dominant this is not true this is drift whereas minority carrier drift is dominant at edges of depletion no near near here we just saw the diagram the electron diffusion will dominate right just refer to the diagram that we had seen earlier so this option is not correct right diffusion current is not dominant in quasi neutral it's the it's the drift current that is dominant there okay minority carrier current is dominant in the quasi neutral region uh, one second right uh, so what's going to be true here is yeah majority carrier drift is dominant in quasi neutral region while minority carrier drift is dominant at the edges of depletion this is what we have been seeing i'm just just i'm taking this option because we had talked about all the possible so just to recall so on this quasi neutral region it's majority drift okay that is the component and in near the depletion near depletion it's minority diffusion okay so these are the only two things that you need to pay attention to. and of course is an injection that part is true and while on the other side they come to here then this then you cross a depletion region and finally they recombine okay so this is the complete flow okay uh, i'll take a pause here uh, if you have any comments or questions you may ask because still now we have been only be talking about what is happening in a pn junction now now we'll start to look at some numbers and appreciate why pn junction diode in fact even in in every new techno new material that comes up uh, fabrication and demonstration of a diode is considered a very major achievement okay and for instance the leds that you see they're nothing but light emitting diodes so diode is is in fact is is the is a very simplistic semiconductor device it, con it contains only p and n time okay it's one of the uh, one of the most simple devices and yet it's more is is so much versatile Okay, so it's 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 of utmost importance to have a good understanding of how it functions. Till now, we are talking only forward bias. We'll also come to reverse bias. All right, then let's go ahead and solve a few problems. So now we will start. Uh, we'll try to understand that how to approach the problems. Okay, so. The plot sh uh, below shows the carrier concentration and p-n junction at room temperature. So here only the n side is shown. We are talking about a p-n junction. So you can assume that. So this is the depletion. This is the p side, and it's given the n side here. Okay. All right. So depletion region is not shown here. So depletion region. Let me draw it anyways. So just assume this is the depletion region. Okay. We are interested only in the n side for now. Answer the following questions. So we have to identify first whether the diode is in forward bias or reverse bias or equilibrium condition. So you can see that on the on the n side you can see these excess holes. P n I told you P denotes hole concentration on n side. So excess holes, excess minority charge carriers, are available only on the only on uh, for example excess holes are available only on the n side if they have diffused from the P side. So so the holes will be much larger in concentration. So here the concentration would be uh, much larger of holes and some of them have diffused till here. This is the excess concentration. So this tells us that this device which is shown here is indeed in forward bias. The reason is that it's in forward bias. And the reason due to the fact that there are excess holes on the depletion region boundary on N side. So the reason, so the correct answer would be X forward bias because there are excess holes on N side this region okay this is the reason 
All right, so now we have established that this diode is in forward bias. All right, now we are required to find the intrinsic carrier concentration. Okay, let's do that. So please note that uh, now I'll draw one more region. So I had drawn in the previous slide, if you recall, this depletion region, right? So this was my depletion region. Now let me draw one more region. Mm. Just a second. Okay, let's consider this region here. This is nothing but N type bulk. Okay, this is extending over here. Let's assume this is extending. All right. So I assume that uh, that here it's an N type bulk region. Okay. So in n type bulk region, we know that NP equal to NI square, the law of mass action will apply. All right, so let's do that. So what's the, so here I have to write NN times PN equal to NI square. This denotes on the N side, I'm applying here in the screen region. What is NN? NN is 10 to the 16. What is PN? PN is 10 to the 10. Note, this 10 to the power 14 is due to the excess of holes which have diffused from the p side right the background concentration is only 10 to the power 10 this should be equal to n i squared so n i will come out to be square root of 10 to the power 26 okay, uh, okay assume these are all in cm minus 3 all right it's not given in the problem but we'll assume that so n i will come out to be 10 to the power 13 cm minus 3 all right so 1 into 10 to the power 13. this all right so that's how uh, so that's how we tried that's how we figure out the even just from this simplistic uh, uh, diagram of your carrier concentrations it's a very handy tool to figure out the if you if you identify ni right if you can identify ni you can uh, can gain a lot of insights about the 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 material that we are talking about because for most semiconductors we have cert certain idea about what intrinsic concentration we are talking about all right okay so is my screen visible because i just lost the connection am i audible okay thank you uh, okay let's go ahead all right, so we saw that this is forward bias and we saw this was 10 to the power 13. Okay, the next question that is asked is the magnitude of the applied voltage is. So again, I let me draw the depletion region here. So this is the depletion region in red. So we are asked the, uh, we are asked to apply the uh, we are asked to find the applied voltage so as we have established is a forward bias right so this is a pn diode and we are applying some external voltage va okay so the hint says use the law of junctions calculate ni in the quasi neutral region so we have already calculated the ni in quasi neutral region and what's the law of junctions the law of junctions says np equal to ni squared QVA over KD, right? This is true everywhere. So let's apply this here at this at this point at x equal to xn. What is the value of n? The value of n is 10 to the power 16. What is the value of p? The value of p, this, at this point is 10 to the power 14. Equal to ni square, that's 10 to the power 13 squared e to the power QVA over KT. So that's 30, that's 26, so that's 10 to the power 4 equal to e to the power QVA over KT. Okay, so uh, let's just quickly solve this. So this is ln of 10 to the power 4 uh, into 26. So this is coming out to be around 239. 0.5 milli electron volts so VA 
for me is coming out to be around 239.5 milli electron volts which is let's say point 239 volts is there an option yeah there is an option like this this one so it's very straightforward problem we just applied the law of the junctions which is and which is true everywhere throughout the pn junction please recall that np equal to ni square is not valid throughout the law of mass action that we saw is true for the equilibrium conditions and some specific cases right but this is true throughout right so and using this we can find out the the applied bias right which is in this case approximately 0.24 volts all right okay so now let's go ahead and try to solve one more problem um, related to this concentrations and all right so uh, so p n junction is given with some doping concentrations so this is p this is n all right the minority concentrations so this is forward biases okay this is some va and this is positive forward bias okay and va has been given as 0.55 volts and what else ni is given now we are required to find the okay so uh, now if you recall uh, the the expressions for for instance i'm going to write the minority concentration so i'm going to write the concentrations of n on p side right electrons on p side okay so what will they be they'll be the background concentration which is the electrons on p side p this denotes the background concentration and finally exponential of QVA over KT. This is the expression. All right. So, uh, so let's let me just uh, figure out what this is. Okay. So this is exponential of QVA. So Q. Uh, so VA is 0.55, and KTYQ is given as 25.9 millivolts. So this will come out to be. Let's find this out quickly. 0.55 divided by 25.9 into 1000 exponential of this mind you so just a second exponential of so this is coming out to be around 1.67 to 10 to the power 9 so this is this term itself 1.67 10 to the power 9 all right now what we are going to do is uh, we are going to we are going to plug this in here so np will come out to be np0 np square will be nothing but ni0 over na because electron concentration on p side will be nothing but ni square over na right into 1.67 into 10 to the power 9 all right so ni square is your 2.25 10 to the power 20 na is given as 8 into 10 to the power 15 times 1.67 into 10 to the power 9 so let me quickly do this 2.25 divided by 8 is 0 0.469 469 into 29 by 14 so 4.69 into 10 to the power 13 cm minus 3 similarly you can find p on n side holes on n side will be nothing but p n 0 it's the background hole concentration times this same term again qva over kt all right so this again will be ni square now over nd because the back here the, the doping is due to uh, the electron doping the uh, what's that donor doping right and this is again 1.67 into 10 to the power 9 now if you solve this this will be one fourth because nd is so this will be sorry four times so this will turn out to be 1.878 into 10 to the power 14 just plug in the numbers you will figure it out so this is so let me change the pen color for once so this is the np and this is your pn so this option i think yeah 1.878 10 to the power 14 and 4.69 10 to the power 13 right and here you you can also apply your uh, law of junctions and just 
just just play with it that, that that's all all right so this can also be find out by application of law of junctions by the way which was np equal to ni square exponential of qva over kt so the different ways of approaching the problem so it's whatever you feel comfortable uh, since this i have not used much personally like law of junctions i feel uh, more comfortable by looking at the concentrations because most if, if you know the concentrations you can figure out almost everything in a p injunction diode forward bias or reverse bias right okay so we ha i have one more problem now this is a, this looks this doesn't care much about the electron hole concentrations this uh, talks uh, as a whole about your uh, the total current flowing through the diode for instance if you are if you are a designer you don't or you you want to use that diode right for some application you don't want and you, you don't want to know about what's going inside for you it's only the current that matters current density right so so for them uh, this absolute current is what is important right okay so we are given an n plus b silicon diode so n is highly doped p is moderately doped t equal to 300 kelvin we have last class i emphasize over this over and over again at 300 Kelvin, we will assume that all the all the impurities have been ionized. So N is N plus, it is indeed N plus and P is indeed P. And we have been given some doping concentrations. With the cross-sectional area is given 10 to the power minus 4 cm squared. The lifetimes are given and the reverse saturation current. We had talked about this a bit, the JS. We'll again talk about it in this slide. And the diode current for the forward bias of 0.5 is. So we are required to find the diode current and this is a very good expression for diode current. This JS is what's given to us here. So this is the, this is the same term as this, right? So alternately, this is also written as JS exponent of QVA over KT minus one. It's also written in this fashion. So JS is given to us, VA is given to us, temperature uh, KT is also given to us. So we can directly just plug in here and find out our answer. So J total will be 8 picoamps times exponential of VA is given as 0.5. KT over Q is also given as 25 MeV minus 1. You will see in most of the times in forward bias because this exponential term is so large, we ignore the minus 1 term. I will I'll just again I'll just try to show it here that it is indeed very large so this is exponential of 20 this term is coming out to be 20 okay this term so effectively this gets reduced to 8 pico amperes e to the power 20 minus 1 e to the power 20 by the way next the number of it is coming out to be this number is coming out to be 0.49 into 10 to the power 9 minus 1 one is ins insignificant in comparison to this hence we we whenever we are forward bias we usually ignore this term okay so let's ignore this term so this will turn out to be uh, times 8 picoamps all right so this term is coming out to be 3.88 this is 9 into minus 12 into 10 to the power minus 3 so units will be amps per centimeter square note js is amps per centimeter square we require to find the current so current is nothing but j total times the cross sectional area this will be 3.88 into 10 to the power minus 3 amps per centimeter square times the area which is 10 to the power minus 4 centimeter squared so this will turn out to be 3.88 into 10 to the power minus 7 sorry amperes okay 3.88 into 10 to the power minus 7 amperes this thing this is the current so this option so you might wonder from where did this expression come uh, for that you'll have to see the because this is quite involving because we remember we found out the concentrations of electrons and holes on the both sides of minority carriers right on the edge of depletion you differentiate that because you know that fusion current is uh, minus q uh, d do and over d uh, differential of concentration with respect to x you do that and you find out these expressions so this term due to due to the holes in the n side 
and this is due to the electrons on the p side and they both have this qva over kt terms and this minus one also comes due to the background doping okay and so that's how this term comes all right oh sorry okay i missed the milliamps thank you alok you're correct so the option is not but c made a mistake i point out the correct answer but i got excited and marked wrong all right 3.88 10 to the power minus 7 amps okay so so enough uh, with the forward bias so okay so let me just pause here for a bit and i'll just wait for your comments or questions if any because sometimes uh, see uh, th there are two things so it sometimes gets uh, it can get confusing to just compare that we just talked about forward bias and your mind is uh, fixed in that regime that okay we are applying a forward bias and fine i understood that the concentration gradients look like that and then you switch to reverse right it might get confusing for some people for me it was very confusing that i was understanding that okay there is a diffusion that is happening and then all of a sudden reverse bias you said that oh no no sorry we were uh, so th there's a different story that's going on here that can happen so hence I i'd like to pause here and, I and i'll again go back to this slide okay in forward bias just this is the slide for you to ke to keep in your keep in your mind okay this helps for forward bias and you can see that just just follow on from p side follow the holes right so you can see that there are some hole current is there and if you still see holes on the other side the holes can come here only if they diffuse right and why would they diffuse if there are extra holes on p side and as compared to the n side right so when you apply a forward bias that is true only then this is a way of understanding in terms of carrier concentrations some people prefer understanding in terms of this you see on your right in terms of band diagrams okay some people say that, that, that okay we can see efn and efp and we can see that the barrier has reduced fine this means there is a the now the current can flow so different interpretations of the same thing so i, I would urge you to just find out what suits you best okay whether you are comfortable with the band diagram picture fine go ahead you can solve problems just by understanding how does a band diagram change when we apply a forward or reverse bias alternately some people understand it best when you when you plot the concentration gradients for instance i feel comfortable with concentration gradients hence even in when when i approach a problem i'll approach from the perspective of concentration gradients okay so i feel comfortable like this because this gives me a complete picture and i need and i need not worry about that okay is it forward is it reverse i can just focus on concentration gradients and i'll follow from there concentration gradients can be arbitrary for that matter it can be np and it can be it can be anything but i'll still follow the picture if i follow the concentration if i follow the concentration of the charge carriers all right or this is this is a macroscopic picture right it it, it continues uh, it consists of all the components that can that are possible right so that's what i'm saying whatever and expressions can come in handy which are at the bottom of the screen but ultimately it's the story that you have to understand right expressions even in even uh, in some in fact in most of the times they're just given the expressions are and not even cared about right it's just the understanding that how you're reaching those expressions i did not go through the derivations today i understand that these are in lectures but just to appreciate that from from where each term comes i told you this minus one comes due to the background concentration i know that this minus one comes due to that this va comes due to the applied bias and hence if we apply a negative bias exponential of some negative term of high negative term will be zero hence j total comes out to be negative just the term reverse right and these terms i know dp will come only when there's diffusion right so dp comes due to diffusion and hence i understand that in forward bias this diffusion happening and you can argue that js term also contains the diffusion terms right that is true you're correct in that that's why sometimes terms can be misleading but if i know how the concentration gradients look then it's 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 difficult to go wrong in understanding mathematics you can go wrong just like i did i missed a minus 3 term that's all right so we saw these problems and all where were we yeah okay 
so i'll wait uh, just any any doubts comments if you want me to repeat anything it's fine just speak up that so because we are done with forward bias and the reverse bias actually is some in in some terms reverse bias is actually easier to understand uh, because there is because uh, you can just think of it like this that the two regions are kind of uh, operating more or less independent of each other except for a highway in between okay here there are uh, uh, i mean here there are many four components you see right hole diffusion electron diffusion and on so on and so that drift also but in the in in the reverse bias the story is diffusion we don't even talk about all right thus it becomes simpler to understand so if so if you still feel confused between that what should i do diffuse uh, sorry which is diffusion which is drift i don't understand how is a pn diode functioning start with reverse bias and then once you get a handle of reverse bias that oh okay that's how the band diagrams look and if the band diagrams look like this the concentration looks like this and thus the current looks like this then it's easier to understand forward bias but but traditionally we have been talking about forward bias hence forward bias is taught first but i i suggest if you find still find it confusing after reading multiple times forget about forward bias start with reverse bias it helps it helps a lot to just change the approach sometimes okay now let's uh, let me see yeah okay so on an extreme left is your uh, p n junction at equilibrium so there is you can see these are shorted um, i mean there's no battery here so we're not applying any any potential right okay so in this we saw this is the, this is our good old uh, band diagram so you see efp is equal to efn and traditionally we we call this what is known as the fermi level and you see on this side on the p side ef should be close to ev because this is p type which makes sense again fermi level should be close to conduction band on n side because the, due to the doping we saw that earlier and we saw on the right side you see this is forward bias we saw that when we apply a forward bias this the built in potential that is there shrinks right so effective potential shrinks and this and then the diffusion of electrons can happen similarly the holes can flow so what happens if we if we if we aid so you just look at the electric field direction electric field built in field is in from this direction to the left of your screens okay so let's mean this is the positive x direction so electric field is in the negative x direction right and if and if i apply a battery something like this this will also have an electric field in this direction e external let's say let me call this e internal all right so e internal is in negative x and there is an external electric field which is also in negative direction so net electric field in this depletion region will increase right and you can see this this is this factor has a longer length electric field is increased now how to denote it in terms of band diagrams you denote it vbi plus vr right this is how we denote it and here in this case electric field was in this direction external electric field mind you the built in electric field is still there it is not gone anywhere so electric field is in this direction and this nullifies it to an extent it nullifies it e internal and thus you can see the potential it's decreased okay and the other thing you can see which you should note is that depletion width has increased which makes sense so essentially what you are doing here is you are supplying holes to the n side right so what's so earlier it was let's say depleted only up to here now extra holes are coming so so they will deplete in this region also where i am drawing the large plus so earlier it was only till here where you see the small plus signs right but these excess holes which are coming holes which are injected right they will traverse to the quasi neutral region and they will also recombine with the electrons that are here and thus this region will also become depleted depletion width will increase electric field will increase we saw that uh, this electric field built in potential and electric fields are all interrelated we saw in the last session same thing is happening here okay so that's why i was saying that in some terms understanding reverse bias is easier because in electric field fine we'll add one more electric field in the same direction so the analysis will not change much okay from 
no bias to reverse bias that's what i meant that it's easier to understand reverse bias right what the exp- some of the expressions that need to derive they are better in terms of forward bias just for the sake of understanding i was saying this right so that is the complete picture in terms of electric field i explained the external electric field which gets in turn you can also understand in terms of band diagrams at this external so okay so vr here is termed as a positive quantity because we've already reversed the polarity so just keep that in mind of the notation sometimes in problems they'll not mention whether it's forward or reverse bias vr usually denotes it's reverse bias if va is negative that also means it's reverse biased good questions will explain what they are talking about but sometimes they don't so you have to be careful a bit careful about that because when your numericals are asked you have to i understand you have to score marks and get grades for high studies or job interviews and what not right just be careful okay so let's now let's whatever understanding that we have very minimal understanding of reverse bias p injunction now let's try to apply that over here okay so here it's asking in a reverse bias p injunction the current density is what okay what is the primary thing that's contributing to that all right so uh, one second let me look for a diagram uh, i don't think okay it's fine i'll draw them okay so what's happening is so this is my p injunction and i am applying a reverse bias to that of magnitude vr okay so what's going to happen is so this is the metallurgical junction and this is the depletion width this much so this I'll, i'll explain what i'm drawing so on the y axis i'm drawing the concentrations of n or p so i'm drawing the electrons so these are the, so this is p side so i'm draw, so this is electrons on p side baseline concentration of np0 okay because it will have some doping right and a and ni square over na will be my np0 so np square will be ni square over na similarly on the right side this concentration is nothing but pn0 holds on n side again this will be ni square over nd right to the from the law of mass action i can apply in this quasi neutral region that's fine here what's happening here the concentration is so low mind you this is in log scale this is position x x equal to 0 x equal to xn and this position is x equal to minus xp okay so what's happening here is that on this side holes all the holes what you can clearly see this is the concentration of holes so here i'm talking about holes let's talk about holes in n side so it's whatever holes are being injected mind you they're injected in an n side region right so depletion region what is the approximation recall the depletion approximation what is the depletion approximation depletion approximation states that no mobile charge carriers in depletion region so this is the depletion region which i will denote in okay which i will denote in black this region so in this depletion region the concentration we assume that that all the holes that we are injected 
positive terminal battery will inject the holes all the holes that are injected that the concentration is so low that is insignificant this is in log scale again i'll remind you so the whole concentration is zero at the depletion edge so there are no holes here so you can what that's why i said it's in the terms it's easier to understand the holes on the p side remember there are holes on this side also there are majority carriers here right these holes have effectively no communication with these holes so these holes are you can say they're injected holes the holes are injected somewhat here these are the background holes but here there are no holes no holes left in the depletion region edge okay similar story goes for electrons which are in green so the electrons which are here there are some background electrons which is noted by this and i square over n a but on the depletion edge the electrons are assumed to be effectively zero I will not say zero, effectively non-existent. Their concentration is very low as compared to the background doping of background concentration of NP0. Right? So that is a difference. So in earlier pictures, you saw that that was exponentially decaying for forward bias. Right? Here you can just see it's flipped on this axis. Right? Background will again, this is the quasi-neutral region, there the background concentration will remain. But otherwise, it's zero at the depletion edge. Okay? So, now, if you try to understand in, in terms of currents now, right, the concentration is fine. What about the currents that we're talking about? So, the only current, uh, there's no, I told you, the holes on the left cannot talk to holes on the right. Similarly, the electrons on the right cannot talk to electrons on the left. So, what's going to happen? We told you, there's an external electric, internal plus external electric field. If due to some reason, whatever reason, there are some holes managed to reach here, the electric field is so large that they're easily swept away to the left. Okay, so what I mean is that even if some holes do manage to reach here, they shall immediately be swept to the this direction. Because remember, this is the E external is on from right to left. Similarly, if some electrons do manage to enter this region somehow, they will be swept to the right. And this is actually one of the reasons that the electron concentration is so low here. Whatever reaches here will be swept to the right due to the strong electric field and whatever hole manages to reach this boundary because just, see, it's all probabilistic actually. There are so many holes, 10 to the power 16, 17, 18 holes which are here. If some manage to reach here, right, they'll cross this depletion region. And why, how? Not due to diffusion. Mind you, the hole concentration is large here. It's very low here. They will cross due to drift because there's a strong electric field that is present here. So, the answer to this problem which is asked here the current density is primarily due to drift this is due to drift right so it is due to drift due to again i told you uh, what are the holes are the minority here right they are coming from here and they are traversing this depletion region the current density is primarily a drift current so it is it must be drift current due to movement of minority carriers because minority carriers will traverse from this region quasi neutral region then they'll come to depletion region. As soon as they come at the depletion edge, they'll be swept away by this electric field. And this electric field I'll write here again. Electric field is due to both E internal plus E external. And this is due to built-in. And this is due to VR. The reverse bias that you are applying over here. So that's 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 the working of a PN junction reverse bias diode. All right, we can add more complexities to that, but on a fundamental level, this is what's happening. There are second order effects which we are not going into. But that that's how a reverse bias uh, junction behaves. It's similar. It's simpler mathematically also because you remember in the in the forward bias, we had that uh, expression for uh, the diffusion expression. If you recall the diffusion current, right? Uh, I should not write it here. I'll write it somewhere. Yeah. So diffusion current. Diffusion current. Can someone tell me the expression? So I am not good at remembering the expressions. I just remember uh, there was some. The, it has some dependence on electron concentration or the carrier concentration, right? So once you once you first you have to obtain the carrier concentration, then you have to differentiate it. To, and to arrive at this formula so thus it's a bit mathematically involving okay in term in the forward bias problems that is okay reverse bias problems are not mathematically not that involved 
just that you have to develop an understanding that how it's happening so this is the picture that i drew here okay all right okay uh, i'll again no let's let's solve this problem if you have any doubts you can ask any time of course but once i uh, uh, once i talk about a large enough topic i usually take a pause so that's why i'm asking any any comments or doubts please ask or speak or write for that matter all right if none then we'll move ahead so in this problem what's sorry what it says is that in a p plus n junction diode under reverse bias okay the magnitude of electric field is maximum at so this is actually a problem from the previous uh, uh, previous uh, what should i say previous session okay so this is a pn junction right and when i apply a reverse bias so we know that there is an built in electric field and this external will add to that so the combination of both right and we know built in peaks at the at the metallurgical junction okay so it's a p plus n all right so i, I so let me just first draw how well p plus built in electric field will look like okay so this is e built in it will look something like this because depletion region will be entirely on almost entirely on the n side this will look something like this the profile of electric field okay this will be your xn this will be your minus xp all right so peak we know that this happens at metallurgical junction we have talked about this term metallurgical junction it is this junction where you can just assume that this p type block and n type just imagine when they are coming together there will be a junction that is formed all right so now you add to it an external electric field okay so what that effectively means is that you shift this diagram lower you shift this diagram entire diagram a bit towards towards the south so what's going to happen is so let's assume this was e equal to 0 okay this this axis it's the x axis So what's going to happen is that the whole diagram will get shifted a bit towards the down. So I'm drawing it in a dotted line. This will look something like this, and then here it will go down, and then these will be your parallel lines. Naturally, you can understand that depletion width will widen, and again this will widen from at x n only. Why at x n? Uh, because um, and sorry, this has to go down to zero. My mistake. Because it's quasi-neutral regions. Actually, in quasi-neutral region, there is some electric field, but very minor. Okay, but this has to go down to zero. What I'm trying to say is that the nature of field will not change. Because just assume that just understand that this region, this electric field, external electric field that you are applying, is applicable throughout the depletion region. so it peaks so so whatever the magnitude is leading it will increase the same everywhere right so that's what i meant that it's parallel so, so i have made a mistake there but uh, the the peak will still appear at the metallurgical junctions the the pn junction that option that is given here here it means the the metallurgical junction okay the other different option like edge of depletion no peak is here the peak will remain there because it's adding to that uh, remember that the electric field formula e total was e external plus e internal right it's simpler to understand in this manner okay all right so let's move ahead with uh, some more problems okay so silicon pn junction at t equal to 300 kelvin with applied reverse bias we are equal to 5 volts so some doping concentration has been given and we are required to find the total potential across the junction so let me draw the band diagram sorry not the band diagram the okay this is vr 
now again i in the last class i told you just make good habit of asking whether this junction is abrupt p n junction or not or not because all the formula remember from the last class for the built in potential the depletion width the peak electric field everything we had derived only for uh, the abrupt p n junction or step p n junction please re please remember that so so every time i was repeating for every problem we solved i was repeating it that please make sure that this is happening please make sure this is happening again those those assumptions are still valid that i am assuming this to be a abrupt pn junction and 300 kelvin means all the impurities have been ionized so it is indeed a pn junction all right i have reverse bias in the doping concentrations have been given i am required to find the total potential okay so i can write v total equal to v built in plus PR. Remember the band diagram, it gets shifted, right? And uh, what is the V built in? V built in is this. So let's put this here. So V total will be KT by Q LN NAND over NI square plus VR. KT by Q is 25 millivolts. It's millivolts actually because Q will get dropped. And ln Na is 20 to 10 to the power 17, Nd is 10 to the power 16, and I is 10 to the power 10 squared plus Vr has been given as 5 volts. Okay, so let me get the calculator. So this will be a natural log of 33 divided by 20. So natural log of 2 into 10 to the 13 right so that comes out to be 30 so 30 into 25 MeV that's coming out 0.77 so this is coming out to be 0.77 plus 5 which is coming out to be 5.77 volts okay now there are two options plus 5.77 or minus 5.77 so which option should we select is the correct one we know the magnitude is 5.77 right and so the potential here we are talking about is assume that since we are talking about the reverse bias right so the potential across the p-n junction it's it's a, again it's a matter i should not be absolute about this it's a matter of interpretation how you are interpreting it we know that the magnitude is 5.77, but how you are writing is it's completely different thing, right? So, but usually how we have been writing a yeah, VBI, whatever we calculate, right? Whatever sign that comes, we assume it to be positive. That's what we have been operating. Remember when you are doing the 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 exercises for uh, p injection at equilibrium, right? There we were not asking this question, asking ourselves this question. That, that what should we should be selected to be positive or negative correct we just assume that uh, for doping we assumed it to be the way we defined it remember this this is how the band structure this is how the this is how you are defining it as vbi right so we are always defining in terms of positive quantity okay ec and ev again we'll do the same so vbi will turn it deem it to be positive and we know in reverse bias the reverse voltage whatever you are applying will simply add on to that remember the electric field expression again and again right so hence this term i'll denote it as a positive number not a negative number even though we are talking about that uh, this pn junction is reverse biased okay so again i'll re-emphasize that why we have been doing it because the way we have defined vbi the built-in potential is this the drop in let's say when you go from p2 inside the drop in uh, conduction band voltage that's how we have been defining the built-in potential right that's why we're defining it as positive built-in potential here again the built-in potential we identified is 0.77 volts right and this extra whatever voltage we are applying will simply add on to that because we saw the electric fields align internal and external and reverse pass electric field will align okay so please keep this into mind okay sir please yeah. repeat why the value is positive and not negative okay so the way we have been defining the built-in potential 
draw this again. Wait, just wait a minute. So remember the band diagram at equilibrium, how it used to look something like this. This was EC, this was EV, right? And the way I was defining built-in potential was something like this. That this drop is VBI, correct? This drop, so whatever this drop in VB, whatever this drop, right? 0.1 volts, 0.2 volts, 0.5 volts, this is what I was defining as VBI and same goes from here to here. VBI right and remember the notation the left side is P and the right side is N so, so this drop is that is the definition of built-in voltage okay this is what I'm talking about you see here this drop is what I'm defining as built-in voltage in in the conduction band voltage conduction band energy as you go from P to N side the drop in conduction band energy is in the built-in voltage what's happening here and this we deem to be positive. Please note the term deem to be positive. We assume this entity to be a positive quantity. Just like uh, just like we have uh, we have taken the electronic charge to be negative. Okay, Alok, I'll answer your question in a bit. So this is deemed positive, and here what's happening is we know that the electric field of this internal and this in the reverse bias case external will simply add up. Right, I just explained it, right, because of the same direction from right to left. So hence, same argument you can just apply directly to the potential. You know the electric field is related to the potential, right, very directly in fact, E equal to minus uh, grad V, gradient of potential, this. Okay. All right. So if, if VBI is denoted by this with a field pointing in the left direction, if we add some external field, right, it will also contribute to the potential which is seen over here. So this extra drop of VR that you see. So that's why we are adding these two terms and VBI is deemed to be positive, again repeat, by the way we are defining it. So VBI is defined as a drop in the conduction band voltage as we move from P side to N side or the drop in electron, uh, sorry, the valence band voltage as we move from P side to N side. That's the definition. And this, and this drop we are defining. If it, it, if the questions ask what is the rise, right? It's not then the VBI would turn out to be negative. But that's not what we are seeing in the problems, right? The way it's defined, it is always positive. Does that answer your question now? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Good. Uh, so. Alok uh, had uh, forgot to answer that. Why multiplied by area in the problem that uh, Alok is asking about a problem we did earlier where we are required to find the total current that is flowing. So let me just go that otherwise I'll forget this problem. So please note that here we, we asked about diode current okay, which is I denoted by this here. All right. This J the, in this formula, this is current density. Please note this is current density. So the units will be amperes per centimeter square per meter square. Hence, same goes with JS. Reverse saturation current density. Hence, the J, somewhere JS was given. Yeah, equals per centimeter square current density. But we are required to find the total current. So we simply uh, obtain the current density and we multiply by the area. Okay, so that's why. So please be careful. Sometimes it's not very clear because we already we we always term talk in terms of current, current, current. But this formula of diode current, the formula that I showed in few slides back, talks about the current density, not about the absolute current. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead. Okay, so uh, we have obtained this turned out to be 5.77 volts. 
the total potential across the PN junction for this reverse bias case. Okay, now the next question asks the ratio of depletion widths with and without the applied reverse bias. So we had, so here it's talking about two cases. So this is the first case, PN. Here there is no bias. Okay, which is calling we call this as W V equal to zero. This is the expression that you see on your screens. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to call this term right as some constant. Mm, what should I call this? Let's call this W naught. It's not a bit. I know it's incorrect. Dimensions not W naught. Some constant W naught. So W V zero. Okay. I'll do in just a second. I'll do in blue color. Uh, sorry, red color itself. So W for V equal to zero will be square root of some W naught V R plus V B I. Okay. So this will turn out to be W naught. So here external bias is zero. This is the diagram I'm talking about. So VR is zero here. This will be W naught times VBI. Okay. So and secondly, uh, which I'll do in green. So this is the second case. When the same PN junction, we apply a reverse bias of five volts. Five volts. Yeah. So here, W V equal to five volts will be square same formula w naught v r plus v b i so w v equal to 5 volts this expression will be w naught and this is 5.77 we find out in the last problem okay so now we need to find the ratio okay mm, i'll do in blue so w v equal to 5 volts divided by w v equal to 0 so let's put this here first so that will be square root w naught into 5.77 divided by let's put this term here w naught into 0.77 remember in the previous problem we found out this this is the built-in this was the v built-in which was 0.77 here okay so that's why I put it here so you see square root of W not cancel out hence I did not calculate these terms so this will turn out to be square root of 5.77 divided by 0.77 okay so let's find out what this turns out to be 5.77 divided by 0.77 square root of that so it turns out to be 2.74 no units because it's a ratio this is the answer fine anyone can put the formula and arrive at the answer right what do we understand by this so again let's go back to this diagram remember i told one thing that you can you can see that the depletion with the, the sky blue region when there is no bias is this much but you can see it's definitely wider as i applied a reverse bias and I told you the reason. The reason is that just assume that some excess holes are coming. So these excess holes, what they're going to do is they're going to recombine. Just imagine they're going to traverse somehow through this region and they're going to recombine whatever the uh, whatever the electrons that are here. So what's going to happen? The depletion width. Depletion region is the region where there are no mobile carriers, right? So whatever electrons that were present here in the large plus region, right? Uh, I'll denote it by a different color, the green region. This, this green region this is newly formed depletion region right it newly formed depletion region because the holes that have come have recombined with the electrons that are present there and now unfortunately or fortunately however you look at it there are no there are no more excess uh, there are sorry no more mobile charge carriers only the lattice ions the, the impurity ions that are fixed here right so similar similar thing will happen here also 
I am not denoting it. So this is again this region is again this newly formed depletion region. All right, this and this. This is happening because you can just imagine electrons are coming and they are whatever holes that were present. So this is the region here. This region and this region. Right, they were not depleted earlier, but now excess electrons will come and they'll recombine with the holes here. Excess holes will come and recombine with the electrons here and the depletion width will increase. And as you can imagine, as we keep on increasing this reverse bias, right, which is, you can see through this formula, mathematics is here. As you keep increasing this reverse bias, the depletion width will keep on increasing, right? And uh, we, I, we solved a problem in the last class. I'll, I'll bring that in some time later. Where I, where I told you that uh, in the last class, I told you that we'll revisit that problem. So I forgot to add this in the slides, but no worries, we'll open that. But here you can clearly see, depletion base has increased 2.74 times. So almost three times it has increased, right? Good. Now, um, as I was saying that, that now just, um, there is an electric field that has been associated with this, okay? Another way of looking at it, right, is what's happening is that you consider them to be, you, you know that there are charges here, right? In the depletion region, the fixed charges that are there. So on the P side, there are negative charges. On the N side, there are positive charges, right? So there is a charge separation. There is an electric field, obviously. This also behaves like a capacitor. It's as if it's storing some energy. Whenever you have some charges, an energy is stored in that region. So there are different ways of seeing that. Some people say whether it's an electric field, the energy is stored in electric fields. Some people argue that the energy is stored in the formation of, in the charges themselves. So however we want to look at it, there is some energy associated and capacitor also, if you recall the, I'm uh, forgetting what it's called, half CV square I think is the energy stored. Very simplistic expression. So similar thing you can just resume here. Some energy is being stored here. So this, okay, so this is energy. Should be careful. This is energy equal to half CV square. So this capacitance that is involved here, and we call this junction capacitance. The name explains it itself, junction, because it's a PN junction. There's capacitance associated. Hence you call it the junction capacitance. Right. How do you find the junction capacitance? Okay, first let me write the unit. So you see capacitance is equal to epsilon A by D for a parallel plate capacitor, right? For a parallel plate capacitor. Right? You will see that formula is different here. Okay, epsilon T, we put the silicon, we assume it to be silicon semiconductor. But uh, as you can clearly see, uh, there is a difference. We do not see an area term here. So this CJ is in fact, the units are farad per centimeter square okay just please so c over a junction capacitance per unit area cj is junction capacitance per unit area this expression how it comes i'll not go into that right this is again again you see this term na and d over na plus nd this is just a, a harmonic mean actually of them and then this is the uh, again you see that if you increase the so okay so term by term. Epsilon will naturally come. This this terms comes, Na and Nd should come because depending on the number of dopants, right, the width will, de depletion width will depend on the concentration of dopants, right. So this term that you see Na and Nd are contribution due to the depletion width, all right. And what also contributes to depletion width? Vr and Vbi. Put the, essentially the W expression which you saw in the previous slide is just put here. I'm just explaining standalone expression. It will depend on VR and VBI. VBI we have already seen. VR, why? We saw that as we increase this VR, so mind you, in this case, in this case, this VA is some minus VR. Okay, you see this is forward bias, but it's not. I deliberately put it like this. Just to emphasize that VA and when it's forward bias, we call it VA, but if VA you put at minus VR, it's effectively the same. Okay. So VR, if you increase the magnitude of VR, you, you keep on putting more negative and negative bias, this depletion width will widen. We saw that in the last slide. 
so the capacitance will also increase sorry capacitance will decrease because the width is increasing right d the distance between these two parallel plates is increasing so capacitance should decrease so hence this comes in the denominator okay the takeaway from that is that cj since it is inversely proportional to the width it's inversely proportional to vr plus vbi again i'll emphasize this is for an abrupt or step p n junction not for pin not for linearly graded this is for a step p n junction for other i think in the lectures professor naresh talks about it you you are welcome to go through that okay all right so this is a direct questions based on that which of the following is true for junction capacitance we just saw that it's uh, it's inversely dependent on vbi plus vr correct but here it doesn't even talk about vr what's happening first i'm assuming it to be a step pn junction step pn assumed excuse me oh actually if you if you look at it the way i'm defining it it doesn't matter you see this this expression depletion width will, will even be there in in case of uh, um in case of when this forward bias but we define it in reverse bias because uh, the current because remember in forward bias is diffusion happening right of minority charge carriers they cross across the depletion region here only you will see in terms of currents i i hope i have a few problems of that we'll see that very few charge carriers cross this depletion region hence ah uh, uh, yeah i recall if you, if you uh, let me go that let me just answer this question in a different way you see this js this is the reverse saturation current this is the reverse current that is flowing what's the units the say picoamps per centimeter squared right this is the reverse current what is the forward current that is flowing milliamps that is minus 3 is milli milliamps per centimeter squared so so there is a nine order of difference you see this term here this is a nine or eight orders of difference between a forward and reverse current okay so correspondingly that gets manifested somewhat not because the depletion bits don't change that drastically concentrations charge exp change exponentially and also the currents depletion bits don't they they in this case you see their square root right but but my point is that they are present in forward bias also we call them diffusion capacitance okay they are present there so uh, i don't uh, hopefully there will be some modeling of diodes right there you will explicitly see the question that you are asking answered there if it's not there remind me again we'll take it up when if it's not there in the lecture slides all right but there is some capacitance also associated with the forward bias traditionally junction capacitance has been associated more closely with the reverse bias that's what i meant to say right okay so it's vbi plus vr but it's only va i told you va is minus vr applied bias if it's negative and vr is we by nomenclature we are taking to be positive quantity so va is negative if va you replace then this gives vr equal to minus va so you replace it there so the answer is this one over root vbi minus va because va value is minus vr there's nothing but this expression essentially i'm just playing with the terms and wasting your time and my time all right okay let's do some numbers now this it's it's always good to have a feel of numbers especially if you have some uh, maybe in your college uh, or if you are interested uh, if you if you if you are a part of electronics club or robotics club there it's very good to have a feel of numbers because you need to know okay i need this milli and this milliamps of current that many uh, microamps of current and then only you will be able to appreciate that these numbers in much more detail all right so the built in potential of abrupt so this question it gives abrupt p n junction that's very good so vbi has been given to us 0.75 volts and the junction capacitance at reverse bias is 5 picofarads okay mind you it's units please look at the units is picofarads all right it's not picofarads per centimeter squared all right so we'll keep that in mind 
so uh, it's given cj at 1.25 is 5 picofarads okay and we are required to find cj at 7.25 all right that's very simple so this is the expression for cj mind you the units is picofarad here area is missing all right so but in this problem area this these are in picofarad not picofarad for centimeter square but anyways area and area will get cancelled all right so don't worry about that we are just required to find the ratios okay so let me find that so let's call cj1 oh okay so cj at let's write it in the same format at 1.25 this will be cj into area i'm putting this expression okay into a by w so assume again this term something to be let's say gamma so this will turn out to be a times square root of gamma over vr plus vbi what's the value of vr 1.25 plus the value of vbi 0.75 All right and this has been given as 5 picofarads just writing the expression and nothing else just putting the formula cj at 1.25 is given as 5 picofarad it should be this expression times area this expression so area terms remain the constant this complex this weird looking term i assume to be gamma vr value is 1.25 vbi is 0.75 all right okay so from this i can get a times root gamma equal to 5 root 2 picofarad okay this i this i got to know from this now what we are required to find is cj at 7.25 so again i'll put the same cj into a which is epsilon silicon a by w which will again turn out to be a over square root of gamma this time the voltage is 7.25 built-in voltage will remain the same 0.75 so this will turn out to be a root gamma over square root of 8 7.25 plus 0.75 is 8 a root gamma is nothing but 5 root 2 picofarad just replacing the value here all right so this will turn out to be uh, root 2 will get cancelled 5 over 2 picofarad so 2.5 picofarad so this will be the answer okay how i did that again i'll just it's very important i keep emphasizing these terms the units if you are confused just look at the units many times they'll they'll they'll, they'll guide you I have done many questions wrong just by not looking at the units properly. Now, first thing I do is just do a dimensional analysis and look at the units. So, CJ formula we know. We are required, we are given some cap junction capacitance at 1.25 volts. but And we are required to find at 7.25 volts. So, I just write this complete term like this. This is given as 5 picofarad. So, I all fill in all the terms except for these. Right, because I don't know NA and ND and anyways these will get cancelled I know because it's a sort of a ratio so from this I get the answer of uh, value of A times root gamma which is 5 root 2 picofarads again put the units picofarads and then for 7.25 I again put everything in this formula except that now the reverse bias is 7.25 right and A root gamma terms comes again which I know the value of already so 5 root 2 over root 8 root 2 gets cancelled so 5 over root 4 which is 2 answer is 2.5 picofarads so one thing you will see is that since it goes as square root it will not rise or fall as for instance depletion width we saw was only 2.74 times only three times in the when you apply a reverse uh, bias right but sometimes these uh, things do play a role and uh, uh, i'll quickly finish off these questions and then we'll then then we'll then i'll tell you what i'm talking about so uh, this is now considered one-sided step p injunction again it's a step p injunction which is code of silicon 
in which doping of N side is greater than P side. So it's a N plus P junction, so to say. Or I'll write it in the same fashion, P N plus. Okay. And VR is given as 20, uh, V reverse bias is given as 20 volts. Now the question says the doping density N is doubled then. What will happen? Okay. So what I'll write is that, I'll write it as C initial. It will be, so N is the thing that is changing. Okay, so what I'll do is, all this, right? Uh, let's call this theta. All right, so C initial expression will be nothing but square root of, theta na over na plus nd why because na is the variable that i'm interested in and nd is greater than na so this term right this expression will now be theta na because na we can neglect so i can write this as approximately equal to theta na over nd correct right so c initial is this what is c final c final will be again theta n a nu or n a final over n a final plus n d and we have gained that it's doubled so n a final is 2 times n a over 2 times n a plus n d now again n d is greater than n a so even if you even if you double n a this will still be neglected in terms in comparison to and so this turns out to be 2 theta n a over n d now we require to find the ratio so c final over c initial square root 2 theta n a upon n d divided by theta n a upon n d this is turning out to be square root of 2 so final capacitance will be uh, 1.4 times the initial capacitance so increases by a factor of root 2 this option this how do we explain it we can explain it that when you are doubling the density all right so what you're doing essentially is that you're increasing the charge in the same region what are the charge that is stored there the space charge it depends on the uh, doping if you remember Right. If you recall the expression for space charge, this is Xn times uh, the doping density, Nd or Na. So if you're increasing the density, essentially you're packing more charge okay, in that same volume. So naturally, if you increase the charge, the capacitance should increase. More energy can be stored. You can look at different perspectives. That, that's, the, that's the explanation that I, that I want to convey. Okay, Mathematics is fine, but just to understand what's going on behind that's that's that I believe is more important okay so so this was the junction capacitance we saw that this was a root to increase right now this question asks what happens with the built-in potential right this is the built-in potential that we know okay so again I will do built-in potential initial right which will be kt by q n a n d over n i squared right and final will be kt by q note n a is doubling so 2 oh sorry ln i forgot natural log 2 n a n d over and I squared now this I can write log a b a times b is log a plus log b so kt by q ln 2 plus ln n a n d over n i squared and this is kt by q ln 2 plus kt by q ln n a n d over n i squared this term is nothing but initial Can see this here so we are required to find the increase right so we can find we can say that vbi final 
minus VBI initial will be nothing but KT by Q ln2 so KT by Q is 25 millivolts times ln2 let's find this out uh, ln2 times 25 by 1000 0 0.017 so this turns out to be 0 0.017 volts increase in because this term is coming out to be positive all right 0 0.017 increases by 0 0.017 so this is the closest option so that's what we'll do all right so again we saw that the built-in uh, i told you that uh, the charge so when you're changing the uh, when you're changing the uh, doping right but one thing you must note that built-in potential has not changed by that much right if you, if you put the same things in terms of current right current as i told current and carrier concentrations for step junctions usually go as uh, exponential so there the, the the change is much much more drastic okay there we see orders of magnitude of change which we saw in that one example okay right okay so this completes this part what i'll do is that uh, as i told that i'll, I'll share a new uh, let me just open my presentation from previous week okay just a second Yeah, okay. So let me first just a second. Okay, now we can see. All right, so this problem says uh, silicon PN junction is shown in the figure and uh, doping densities are given and some parameters are also given like built-in potential and whatnot now the question says the benuda reverse bias voltage that would completely deplete one of the two regions so so we already know that there is some existing depletion bit that will be present here right and we know as we increase the uh, as we increase the reverse bias now let's apply a reverse bias to this now you can understand appreciate this problem better so when apply with this reverse bias we know the depletion will keep on increasing and it'll keep increasing in n as well as p because the doping density is more or less similar right if it were let's say doping density much higher orders of magnitude higher in one side then we know depletion region will only extend in the the low doped region right but here it's not the case it will extend both sides so the question is which one will be depleted first all right how to figure out this is the expression for depletion width and we know now we add plus one vr term we have seen that right and the both sides uh, it's distributed something like this correct so so let's just so let's just uh, right so now let's assume that n side will deplete it let p side will deplete it first okay this means xp will become 1.2 microns okay 1.2 microns so that's case one p fully depleted so xp will equal 1.2 microns this will be nd over na plus nd times w this will give me w equal to 1.2 micron times na plus nd is 15 into 10 to the power 16 uh, divide by sorry 0 0.5 this will become 1.5 divide by nd so this will turn out to be into 1.5 you can just rearrange the terms and uh, yeah this is how it so 1.2 times 1.5 right this will turn out to be uh, 
times 1.5 is uh, 0.6 sorry 0.6 times 3 1.8 microns so total rates 1.5 so let's now find out in this case xn would be what so xn would be actually w minus this so xn will turn out to be w minus xp which is 0.6 microns but that's not possible why not possible because the whole width is only 0.2 microns since physical length is 0.2 microns right so what's going to happen is n side will get depleted first all right so now we can conclude that now i'll write here n side will be depleted first so this is again vbi plus vr now we know n side will get depleted so now this means that xn will be equal to 0.2 microns so now we can put this formula here so 0.2 will be na na is 5 into 10 to the power 16 over 5 into 10 to the power 16 plus 10 to the power 17 times w this will give me w equal to uh, this is uh, 1.5 by 0.5 this will give w as 0.6 microns w we you get 0.6 microns so now you put 0.6 microns equal to here 2 epsilon silicon you know the value of epsilon silicon is given as 12 na and nd are also given and you vbi is given as 0.8 the only term that you don't know this expression this complete expression is vr from this expression i'm not going to solve it you can find out vr all right so now i told you in the last class in the last session that uh, the the we'll revisit this so now i hope you are able to appreciate this better and this is this is not some hypothetical problem this p and n regions do have certain physical lengths they are not infinitely long which we tend to consider whenever we were drawing p n blocks we assume that they are infinitely long a depletion region will just will never it will never happen that it will get depleted there are some assumptions here of course that when you when you come when you come to the stage where the semiconductor is going to be is near complete depletion so some of the uh, assumptions that we have made don't make sense anymore but from for, from from a uh, from at this level of understanding of whatever knowledge you have of pn junction this is more than sufficient to answer that so so just to summarize what's going to happen is so so this is the depletion region let's say at and you can also see that depletion region is more in p side because w is 0.6 and we can also say xp is w minus xn turn out to be 0.4 microns right so let me draw this to the best possible scale that i can okay so this means when this so let's assume that this is the case when we have not complete depletion Okay, let's say this is the case red is when, so this case is when Vr equal to 0. This means at equilibrium. Okay, the build, the depletion with that Vr. So, so what's going to happen is when you are going to apply some external bias, right? This will keep on shifting to the right. And this will also, this will also shift to the left. And this will this will get completely depleted but this will reach only at this point which in this case is 0.4 this is not to scale sorry about that this length will be 0.4 microns that's what we have determined when this is completely depleted and this the blue case right is when some value of vr that will determine blue corresponds to vr and red corresponds to your v0 okay so this is the thing that i wanted to revisit and it's good that some time was left and we were able to see it again
all right um so i guess that is it uh, from my side i'll stay back for a couple of minutes or maybe more if you are if you have some doubts comments and questions just feel free to ask alok if you are good uh, you can close the session or you can ask from this session or previous sessions and try to sir please upload this ppt also in I'm, youtube lecture i am uploading the okay you saying in the youtube ppt i am not getting it only videos i am seeing okay okay i'll do that because uh, we are required to upload this on a separate uh, which i believe is i don't know if that no that is being shared that is being shared i don't know okay i'll i'll upload it in the youtube also but there is a yes, formal yes. way of getting it right you just write okay. to, uh, because we, because we uh, every one of us is being asked to upload this ppt in a pdf format in the google drive and the, because i because i received request from many people for sharing the links okay and anyways i'll i'll upload this in the youtube itself thank you for the suggestion i'll do that yes but, sir but, i actually sir i watch your previous sessions on youtube also okay so i didn't find the pdf there okay i'll upload the pdf then of every session okay sir thank you sir okay chalo thank you thank you mr